Hi guys. Welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Dane. And today we are upstairs in the studio, but we're heading that way, which is a little bit of a different setting. It's a brand new prep kitchen, which is finally complete. The studio is getting there, um, but this prep kitchen is insane. It's very minimalist, chic, and very Cupcake Gemma. You can see the blue cupboard doors, powder coated handles, and a cool, bright yellow floor. <laughs> um, the, the studio is looking great and you can see like bits of it coming together. It's very, very Cupcake Gemma. We've kept everything very on brand with the colours and I cannot wait to finally start baking in there. But today we thought we'd set up in here because why not? We've got some natural light and um, it's very cool. So today I'm going to be making a recipe for some bite-sized treats called Nanaimo bars and these are a chocolatey, coconut, nutty, buttery biscuit base. It's topped with a silky, melt-in-the-mouth custard buttercream, and it's got a chocolate top, which is like bittersweet, and it's got a bit of a snap to it. These originate from Canada in the region of Nanaimo in British Columbia. And I know a lot of you kind of guessed what I was kind of testing and making on my Instagram the other week, and it was these Nanaimo bars. I've had them a couple of times before, and actually I used to have them at school, but I always thought I was allergic to whatever was in the base. I mean, it is nuts, but I'm allergic to peanuts, and so is Sally, but they don't have peanuts in. But you can kind of make them whatever you like, and I've seen a few different versions, for like salted caramel ones, Biscoff ones, but I'm gonna stick to the classic today. So, let's get started. The first thing is I'm gonna melt some butter in a saucepan over a medium heat. And if you want all the quantities to the recipe today, you can sign up to our bake club, you'll get a beautiful downloadable PDF recipe with the descriptions and some pictures. But if you just want the um, ingredients, they're in the description box below. So don't also forget to like and subscribe because it helps, you know, the algorithm and all that kind of dorky stuff. And it helps us out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. So I'm just gonna wait for this to melt and then we'll add in some other stuff. The butter is melted. I'm going to take it off of the heat and add some other ingredients. A little bit of sweetness and some cocoa powder as well. So, I've got some caster sugar here, all going in. And then I'm going to add three quarters of a table teaspoon, not a tablespoon, that's too much salt, of um, salt. And then some cocoa powder, because this is a chocolatey base. And then, randomly, I've got one egg. Now, that might seem a little bit weird, but it goes thick and it almost looks a little bit like ganache when you stir it all together. So trust me on this. And then I'm just gonna pop this mixture back on the hob for a minute or two to cook out the egg and it will thicken a little bit as well. This mixture is super thick, chocolatey. The egg has thickened it up. It's really shiny and a bit gloopy as well. Do you wanna eat this? Maybe, but it'd be nicer with some biscuits, coconut and walnuts. So I've already, um, I blitzed up, well I didn't blitz them, I bashed them in a bag. You can use a food processor if you want. Just some hobnobs, you can use digestive biscuits. Traditionally it's with graham crackers, but we're in the United Kingdom here, so I'm gonna use hobnobs, because um, they've got a nice kind of OT taste, which I really love. Then I've got some desiccated coconut, which is going into a large bowl. And I've chopped some walnuts as well. And they are going in. You can use any nuts that you like, really, I mean, you could use pecans would work really well with this. Um, go for what you fancy. So that's all in there. And then I'm gonna bring back my chocolatey mixture and just pour it in, mix it all together. So this mixture is Looking pretty delightful, if I do say so myself. It's kind of more of a jab at it and kind of scrape round than like a mixy mix, because it will just go everywhere, um, until the liquid gets incorporated into the biscuits and the coconut and the nuts. And I'm just gonna pop it in my pre-lined tin. I just line this with some greaseproof paper and the tin spray. And it's a 10 inch tin, square tin, but you can half this recipe and make it in a seven inch tin if you like. It's completely up to you. And I'm just gonna squish it down with my cranked palette knife, making sure it's nice and smooth. Once you've got this layer nice and even and smooth on top, I'm gonna pop it in the fridge for about 20 minutes to half an hour, just to let it set, and uh, I'll be back to make the buttercream.
I've got my butter whipping. It's nice and pale and fluffy. And I've got my icing sugar already sifted, ready to go in. But the last thing I'm gonna add is some custard powder. Now this is synonymous to an Ananimo bar. And I did try this making a creme mousseline because I thought I'd be a bit fancy, but it didn't really work. And we found, we all kind of found that this ate a little bit better. It set firmer and it was just nicer overall. So I've got some custard powder. You probably recognize this one. You can get it from the supermarkets. I'm gonna add four big tablespoons. It's kind of a bit dry, this powder. Like when you add milk to it and make, you can make custard with it. Um, you can make custard that you can literally stick and stand a spoon up in it, but that's not what we're doing today. We're gonna add it to this buttercream. So that's all sifted in, and I'm gonna add half to the butter, give it a quick beat, and then we'll add the other half and give it another beat. It's whipped up for about two to three minutes, and I'm just gonna add some double cream to finish it off, about five tablespoons. Buttercream is ready and it's nice and whipped up, pale, light and fluffy and also really thick. It's holding its shape, which is exactly what we want because I'm gonna get a nice clean slice through this bar. So I'll just clean this off of the paddle. Very strange paddle for this small mini mixer, which is working very, very hard today because it's having to deal with this kind of thick buttercream. Um, usually it's having like meringue whipped in it, which is a little bit lighter, so. Get this out, give it a little mix. And then we'll grab our base back, which has been in the fridge for about half an hour. Here it is, nice and chill. And it's important to set these layers in between just so that um, you know the base doesn't lift up when we put the buttercream on. So I'll just pop all of this onto the base and give it a spread out with my cranked palette knife again until it's nice and even and smooth. All done. I just neatened up the edges by going around there with the crank palette knife just to get them nice and sharp so that when we cut into this, we won't get nice, like little bits of buttercream on the sides of the paper. This is going to go back into the fridge just to set up for about 20 to 30 minutes again, and then we'll get on with making the chocolate top. And I've got my chocolate here on the hob over a pan of simmering water and I've got some butter in there as well. Just melted it all down and now it's ready to go onto the final buttercream layer. And I'm just gonna smooth it out using, again, this very handy cranked palette knife. And just make sure that your fingers um, and your hand does not get in the way, because as you can see, you can do this and yeah and there's another way. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and level on top. You don't need to get it like super, super smooth. With this, I kind of like that it's a little bit textured um, on top. So just do it how you please. Make a pretty pattern. It's totally up to you. It's all nice and smooth. And it needs to go back in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes, but you wanna make sure that it's not completely set or else it'll be really hard to cut into and it'll crack when you cut it open. But don't worry, here's one I made earlier and it's already prepared. Just gotta take it out the tin and cut it up. But luckily we've got these loose bottom tins so it makes it super easy to get out. And I'm just gonna tip it up and take the base off. But you can already see the layers happening inside. I'm gonna peel it off so we can see the excitement of the layers inside. How cool does that look? It'll look even cooler when we cut it up my large knife here and I think I'm going to use a blowtorch just to heat the knife a little bit so it'll cut through and slice really cleanly. Look at how cool that looks! Those clean layers especially on this side. And that thin layer of chocolate just finishes it off really nicely. Right, time to eat. Mmm, so good. That buttery biscuit base is just like the perfect texture with the nuts, the slightly chewy coconut, and also 
the buttercream is like divine. It just melts in the mouth and it has that custardy flavor, which is absolutely what we are looking for. Um, and the chocolate top is just that little bit of bitterness that kind of dials down the sweetness of the buttercream perfectly. Absolutely love these bars. I think I may well, might as well eat the rest of them. I mean, there's only set, oh, did you, did you, oh, did you want one? Well, if you want one, you're gonna have to make them. So make sure you do that and you tag us in all of your pictures because we love to see it. Hashtag Cupcake Gemma, hashtag Crumbs and Doilies, at Crumbs and Doilies, at Cupcake Gemma, all the apps. And um, I wanna see you making these because it's such a fun, quick, easy recipe. And you can also jazz it up yourself. Maybe put some Biscoff in there, caramel. You could do different flavors of the buttercream. The possibilities are endless. So get to baking these and uh, we'll see you soon with another recipe. Laters.